How the Light Gets In is the Institute of Art and Ideas' unique festival, combining days full of talks and debates in philosophy, politics, arts and science, with evenings full of music and dance. Get your tickets for the world's largest music and philosophy festival at howthelightgetsin.org. This is uh, published in 1958. It's a book by Michael Young called The Rise of the Meritocracy. He invented this word. And many of you know Michael Young, of course, one of the great public intellectuals of the 20th century, the founder of the Open University, et cetera, et cetera. Just a, ter a terrific force in 20th century British life. He couldn't, he couldn't publish this book. He was very worried about it. And you know, he's really worried about this word meritocracy, which he made up. And why he was worried about it was because it contains a, Greek, a word with a Greek root and a word with a Latin root. And he, just, and he just mushed them together. And he says so all these letters from Young sort of saying, I just don't think people are going to take it seriously. You know, I've just taken a word of the Latin root and a word of the Greek root and put it together. This apparently is what troubled social scientists in the middle of the 20th century. <laughs> right, I don't know how many of you will be able to tell me what the Greek and Latin were, roots are of the two words he put together. And more importantly, does anyone really care? But um, the book did get published as a friend to favourites, published as a novel, and he spent the rest of his life writing letters to The Guardian saying, that's not what I meant every time a politician used the word, including especially Tony Blair. It's a dystopia. It's a dystopian novel. It's a, it's a book about what would happen to a society that comes to believe itself to be a meritocracy. And in some narrow ways, to be a meritocracy. If you define merit as having the sorts of skills and capabilities that will be rewarded in the labor market, it turns out that people who've got lots of those skills and capabilities do really well in the labor market, <laughs> right? Uh, and so it is meritocratic in that sense. The very first sentence of Goldman Sachs' mission statement is Goldman Sachs is a meritocracy. I don't know if Michael Young ever knew that. I hope not for his sake. Because uh, that's not what I meant, is what he would have written. Um, but he describes a society where IQ plus effort equals merit, and you don't have an aristocracy anymore, but a true meritocracy of talent. Why is it a dystopia? Because that sounds pretty good to a lot of people. And actually, in the labor market, meritocracy has been a force for good in many ways particularly in reducing, although not eliminating, racial and gender inequalities. Four things happen in this book. So if you're not going to read it, and I really hope you will, I will tell you the main four takeaways from this book published 60 years ago this year. Number one, income inequality significantly increases once the meritocracy is established. Because unlike in the old society where the aristocracy or the kind of posh people kind of knew it was luck that got them where they were, they felt they should do something to actually compensate for people who are poorer. But in a meritocracy, that doesn't happen. In a meritocracy, the people who are doing really well are there because of their own brilliance and their own hard work. If, after all, your success can be attributed to your own merit, why on earth would you want to give any of it away? Why would you want a 529 plan taken away? Why would you want to pay a mansion tax? Why would you support increasing inheritance tax, etc.? Why would you be in favor of higher income taxes? Because, after all, you worked hard for that money in a meritocracy. The result of that is massively rising income inequality. Second thing that happens is the people who are doing badly in a meritocracy get increasingly despairing and disillusioned. Because it's really hard to be in a society that keeps telling you it's a meritocracy when your life is really hard and you don't feel you're making any progress because the only person you can blame is yourself. And so there's huge uh, dis there's disengagement and disenchantment among the bottom 80% of his meritocracy. The third thing that happens is everyone gets obsessed with who they're going to marry and have kids with. Because after all, if you want meritocratic kids, high IQ, very well cultivated, you really want to marry someone else who's highly educated, high IQ, and then you can cultivate the kids together. And so the rise of something called assortative mating, as sociologists now call it. Assortative mating is the trend whereby you tend to marry and mate with someone like you, educationally, socially, etc. And in the US now, on some measures, people are more likely to marry across racial lines than they are to marry across educational lines. So in other words, if you have a college degree in the US, you are going to marry someone else with a college degree. You are actually less likely to marry someone who doesn't have a college degree than someone who's a different race to you. There's this obsession with who you marry. Now, I'm not suggesting assortative mating is a very romantic phrase. <laughs> and, and if any of you are using uh, uh, those online-based, app-based uh, dating apps, I wouldn't say seeking to assortatively <laughs> mate with. Fourth thing that happens, there is a populist revolt against the meritocracy when skillful populist leaders channel the disenchantment of the losers in the meritocracy against the meritocratic elite, and it ends in a bloody revolution. Get your tickets for the world's largest music and philosophy festival at howthelightgetsin.org.